Alright guys, we're back on the Oldsmo bubble, and last time you saw it, it was running, but it was super duper loud. Um, some people commented that they thought they heard a knock. Really, the, the reason why it sounded like that is because, I think I showed this before, the exhaust ends right there. So basically, there's the Y pipe, so, and you can see the beginning of a header right there. Honest truth, I'm running open header, so it's going to sound a little bit crazy. So what I did is I had to cut a little bit off the end of that pipe. I'll show it to you. I had to cut this part off the end of the pipe because it looks like it had a weld right here at one point, and then um, the exhaust either got ripped off or taken off or what, but it's completely gone. I have no exhaust. So what I did was I went to the parts car, and this is the tailpipe of the parts car, at least what's left of it, and I cut the end off of it, and I took it down to the um, uh, little exhaust shop we have in town. I took this muffler, which is off of a Corvette, and I said, hey, I need the end of this muffler to fit in here. So they stretched it out for me. So that's what we have. And um, I'm fingers crossed that this pipe off of the uh, parts car is the same diameter of what I took off my car. And I'm pretty sure we're very, very close. So that means I'm going to hang this muffler up in there. We're going to have a pipe clamp, or a muffler clamp, ready to go. But I want to stress something really quickly. This muffler right here, it's not permanent, guys. So all the comments about how exhaust ending under your feet will get in the cabin, etc., etc., etc. I plan on putting exhaust all the way to the back. Just not yet, because there's no point in spending money on an exhaust on an engine. I really have no idea if it's that good, because I can't hear it tick or I can't hear it knock because it's loud so we'll get this muffler in and see if we can't get this turd to start all right here's the finished product my temporary exhaust fix so there's the muffler it tucks up really nice actually and almost goes to the end of the front door um, the one thing that kind of sucks is the place that I put the clamp uh, no matter what it's gonna hit as the exhaust goes through the frame it hits the bottom of the frame so I put this little piece of, this is anti-squeak stuff from a Corvette gas tank. Uh, so it won't rattle if it does rattle. And then now we should be able to start it and hear what it sounds like. All right, the last time I ran this engine, I filled it full of water and I took the radiator cap off and it is still full of water. So that's good, holds water really, really well. Uh, we have maybe a working choke this time and I still probably will have to uh, prime the carburetor since I think it's the accelerator pump that's having issues uh, the last time we ran it. So hopefully this time it'll sound a little better than last time. So I'm going to prime the carburetor but also watch for billows of smoke coming out the exhaust. Last time I ran it I didn't see anything like that. I don't think there will be but just watch for it because you never know. Windshield wipers are on. What can I do about it? <laughs> Sounded pretty good.
much quieter than before. That water pump probably needs replaced. Uh, I have some noise coming from the valve train, but I'm not really worried about that. Um, I think that will quiet down as we get some heat. See if it sucks down any water. That looks pretty good. My fuel pump's leaking, but maybe not. Oh yeah, it sounds like a Corvette. It's pretty quiet, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty quiet. Yeah, that accelerator pump needs some work. It's running, it's going. Some noise coming from this, but I'm not gonna worry about it yet. Water pump's kind of wobbly. So far, so good. I have an extra clamp on my hose. I'm gonna probably put some transmission fluid in it. See if that does anything. All right, my tank ran out of gas. So it's full. Now we'll prime the carburetor again. Let's see what we get. I want it to get hot. Put another quarter of transmission fluid in it. <laughs> Why? Why do you die? Okay, you don't want me in the video? No. I don't get it. It suddenly stops, turns on, stops, turns on, I don't know. Looks like my choke opened up. That's good. Check the transmission fluid again. I put a little bit more in. It keeps dying when I try to do that. It's super annoying. Okay. Yeah, fluid. I don't know. 
Try to tell. Don't die. Still got gas. Just doesn't like me. Figured out what the noise is. I thought it sounds like a like a power steering pump or something whining. I bet you the Bendix is just riding the flywheel. And I bet you that's what that noise is. Is that a leak? A little water leak? No, they look okay. I'm gonna keep running it though. Can't hurt. So it looks like the next thing I'm going to do besides the water pump is take the starter out for the 800th time. And it looks like I have to uh, get a new Bendix for it. I thought it would kind of pop back in, um, but it doesn't look like it's wanting to, which is making that noise. So it's one of those things. But hey, the engine runs pretty good, not going to lie. Um, just a few little tweaks that need done, and then we can fill the transmission up and do the brakes and maybe drive it. We'll see. A lot of times I'll browse eBay and I'll see random 53 year Oldsmobile things and I got this for under 10 bucks and it's super neat. So it's in pretty much perfect condition and it looks just like a normal book. But look at this thing. It's this huge long, I mean it's probably 5 feet long, this huge long pamphlet about everything in the 53 year old you could get. I don't think I have enough table to uh, spread this all the way out. So this is basically the brochure that you looked at when you wanted to buy one. And I mean it's cool because this is all hand drawn. It's talking about higher powered, higher compression, 12 volt ignition, new chassis, new body, power brakes, electronic eye, lounge cushions, air conditioner, and instrument panel. So if you look at this thing, it's a very, very long pamphlet. So it has all these cool drawings and all these descriptions on everything on it and it's one big long uh, pretty much brochure oh I'm missing one just kidding there's two you guys didn't get to see there we go we forgot about the uh, power steering and the super drive so it's even longer than, than it was before there you go that's how long it is and it's all pretty much in mint condition super cool then on the back It has even more things about Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile first, the rocket engine, the carburetor, the testing, program for road testing, and all that kind of stuff. Super cool piece. One thing I do want to mention is there's probably been 50 people that have called me stupid for putting a 12 volt battery in my 53 olds. Well, guess what, guys? 12 volts. 53 was the first year in Oldsmobile that went to 12 volts. Uh, it's probably going to continue happening like that, but that's how it is. It's 12 volts, guys. <laughs>